Hi then, David. Hi, lovely to see you again. Um, you Thank and I you. met a couple of weeks ago on an under 60s WhatsApp Zoom chat. Yeah. And um, that was a fantastic thing to do. And we, your story really interested me then. It was fascinating. So. Thank you very much for agreeing to come on. And can you tell us, first of all, just a little bit about yourself? I'm a, I'm a mental health nurse. Uh, I work in a, a, a general hospital, mainly in A&E. Um, I live in Suffolk with my wife and our giant dog. Uh, and my treatment is at Ipswich Hospital. Tell us anything you'd like to tell us about your, when you were diagnosed, how you, did, how you felt beforehand. Um, I was diagnosed uh, early in December last year and that was on the back of uh, probably a year or two of what felt like continual chest infections uh, and, and gastroenteritis at one point but certainly just repeated infections um, feeling uh, increasingly uh, old. Uh, I, I, in hindsight I would say it was weakness, increasingly weak, but I was just feeling increasingly run down and thinking this, this is crazy, I'm in my kind of early 50s I need to start looking after myself. I'd gone to the GP uh, probably a few times. I'd also worked in an A&E. Uh, I'd, I'd been stopped a couple of times with people saying, like, you're, you're not sounding great. You should see your GP or be on antibiotics or something. Uh, and I, 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 I got to a point where I was, I was feeling awkward about bothering my GP all the time, thinking, this is crazy. I need to just keep trying to get through this. And I tried to get healthier. Uh, early last year, I, I decided I need to lose some weight and try and get healthier. So I was trying to cycle to work and yeah. trying to improve my diet um, and, and wondering why none of those things were working. I was feeling more tired. My GP then thought that I might have asthma and that was because I was complaining of chest pain and just finding it harder and harder to, to, to breathe properly. And I, I couldn't cycle uh, at this point either. And I'd, I'd lost a lot of weight, but I had put that down to being really good at dieting. Um, so there were, there were signs, or the, the signs were there. I ended up, I, I lost nearly six stones in total. I was finding my, my, my uh, thigh bones and hips and, and arms in particular, shoulders, everything was, was becoming really quite painful. And this was towards the end of last year? Yeah, so this yep. is uh, probably the last five or six weeks before I was diagnosed. That it really felt like I'd, I'd stepped off a cliff. I was really struggling. I'd bloods done on a Monday, and on the Tuesday morning, I, I went to work as normal and was really struggling, but had noticed that I'd missed a number of calls during the night, and it was from a number that I didn't recognise, so I thought, didn't want to think too much of it. Mm. Then when I got to work, there was a missed call, uh, from, from the GP, so when I phoned them up, they told me I had to get back down there for um, more bloods. And it was a, 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 a fish in a flow blood test that they wanted to do mm -hmm. for me. But the person taking them at the time, a uh, phlebotomist, didn't know what they were. So I was getting quite anxious at this point. I came home after that, and my, my wife was here, and, and then the, the GP phoned me up a short while later and, and, and told me what the blood results were what they were concerned about and, and, and what they thought it was, what she thought it was. And she'd already spoken to the hospital and I was to go straight there because they were uh, expecting me. And she told you you'd got CLL over the phone, did she? Or she, uh, thought, she thought you'd got it? Yeah. yeah. Did they give you your fish results then as well? Did you know about any mutations or anything? No, 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 not at that point. Um, I just remember a couple of the results that I got then and, and then you know, in, in, in hospital felt very much like it was happening in real time. Yeah. Uh, it's a real time as well. It's just, it's, it's very odd from, from one minute to the next. And it, my GP is lovely. She's really, really lovely and was very, very apologetic that she was telling me over the phone. Um, but there, there was an urgency. And did you go into A&E? How did it work when you went to hospital? Did you go straight to haematology or...? No, no, there wasn't any beds on haematology, so I went straight to an admissions ward. I think if, if a GP phones up at a hospital to admit somebody, then they can go straight to an admissions ward. There'll be right. every hospital will have a ward like that. So that, that was why I, I went there. And there normally, as this one was, really, really busy and lots of people coming and going. And my, my wife and I went, and you know, it's, it's surreal. You're trying to process what you've just been told and trying to uh, ask lots of questions. You know, what does this mean? How bad is it? Um, how long have I got? Uh, all those things, because you, 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 you don't know too much about it at this point. 
Uh, you just hear the word leukemia, don't you? And that's yeah. and then it it just sort of goes. Your brain goes still. Yeah, and I knew enough about my blood results to know that they weren't they weren't they weren't amazing. Um, Stay still on the uh, acute admissions ward. I get moved quite a number of times because I started off in a chair to a trolley to a bed to another bay, um, which is the the nature of it. But it is, you know, it's very odd. Thirty years in the NHS to now be on the other side mm-hmm. and to be a, a patient and, and 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 have that experience at a time when you're. Yeah, you're frightened. Uh, you, you don't know what it is that you've got, how severe it is, what, what what's going to happen next. Um, but they were uh, lovely. And then the following morning, the uh, haematology team came to see me early on. Uh, and I'd say sat us down. I was already <laughs> sat down. And, and, and spent a bit of time just going through it all and explaining everything. Uh, mentioning the trial that I'm on. So they mentioned that they mentioned the flare trial straight away to you, did they? Yeah, they did. They did, and uh, the chap from the research team uh, came as part of the haematology team that came around to speak to me. I, I, I realised I was struggling a wee bit cognitively as well in terms of concentration and recall and focus, and then probably as well just the shock of it all. And this is all yes. within you know, less than 24 hours after being told. And they're talking to you about treatment within 24 hours, because it's unusual, as you know, with CLL. Yours is I, unusual. I, I now know. That, that was my normal. Uh, I, yes. I didn't know uh, anything different at that point. A third of people never need treatment, so you're, yes. you're, yeah. at, you're at the other end of the treatment scale. Lucky for you, you had your wife there to listen to what people are talking to you about as well. That makes a huge difference. I think in those positions, you know, we, 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 we would know that, and we would think that anecdotally, that if you were going to, you were having to be told, difficult news or, or, or involved news, complicated information, then you would want someone with you. You went straight on to the flare trial within a matter of days, did you? If I hadn't uh, 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 considered and then agreed to go on the flare trial, I would have started treatment straight away. Right. Uh, they would have started me on FCR straight away. And we're so, still in December? We're still in December? I, I still in yep. December. So they, then more bloods have to be sent off to, I think the processes they had, they had to be sent off to Leeds. So that, that then came back that I was I, I, I was okay to go on the trial. And then every, most people will know this. They then check again that you're still agreeable to going on the trial. Yep. And you sit in, a, sit in a wee room and someone goes off and contacts Leeds and they randomly allocate you to an arm of the trial. Uh, and so when did you start? When did the flare trial start for you? Uh, 30th of December. And how did they keep you healthy? During the time from going into sort of almost like an emergency admission, uh, I stayed in hospital for uh, I, I can't remember a week or so. I, I had uh, a number of blood transfusions. My hemoglobin was was low, um, uh, and then I was able to go home, but still be coming in, and they were checking my blood every day. From what you said to me, you had fantastic treatment at Ipswich, and. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The Macmillan unit there, the Wolverston Macmillan, is 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 lovely. Um, people are fantastic. Um, whoever comes up to see you knows knows everything about you. Knows exactly what's going to be happening on that day. That doesn't always happen in, in lots of departments in the NHS. Whoever's allocated to you, they, they will know everything about you. And you, you gradually get to know most people there anyway, but uh, any decisions that were being made were, were really being based on the kind of totality of my progress or otherwise. That's fantastic to hear. Um, absolutely fantastic. So can we then move forward a tiny bit after, say, let's go to January? You start, you allocated the um, Abrutinib and Venetoclax arm. Yeah, 30th of December is when I started. And how's it been? Talk us through your flare trial treatment. The uh, side effects I had from the butronib were were robust. <laughs> I got a joint pain from the butronib, right. and uh, uh, mouth ulcers as well. But the the, the joint pain was uh, interesting. That 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 was really really quite challenging. Uh, and has that resolved itself? I completely. Yeah yeah yeah. It's, uh, it was probably there for off and on for about uh, two three months. It's, it's transient. You get you for for me certainly. I and, and it, mo- it moves around the body in different joints. Uh, and when it comes, it's it kind of lasted about three four days. The the, the middle twenty four hours was was the most uncomfortable, and then it starts to ease, and then you're you're relaxing a bit because you you can feel significant changes when it starts to ease, which is which is a delight. And I was offered. 
pain, pain relief, um, and, and stupidly, I'm a boy. I, I, I refused to. St- I didn't want the the, the stronger uh, pain relief, but I, I, I would take uh, uh, paracetamol or, or, or just use for, for me um, a warm, warm, warm towels or warm cloths with that are still quite hot. Really, really helped. You know, with, and with venetoclax, did you have big nodes or anything, or did you? Were they worried about tumor lysis syndrome? Yeah, I did have that when I started the venetoclax. Did um, you? you actually had yeah. that. Yeah, so that took it took me a week or two to get started on the venetoclax, but that 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 then I managed to get get through that and and, and was able to get established on the venetoclax. So how long do you think it took you to to start to feel better? It's probably maybe where are we now? Maybe four or five months into treatment, and there was like a, a, a switch uh, where in a, in a very very short space of time, I just I just I, I had energy. I, I, I could do things. I could walk upstairs without thinking about it. I could pick up things. I could I could move around. I could walk around. It was uh, it was astonishing. I almost felt quite high for a week. Thinking, I said, I feel better than I have done in, in, in probably two or three years, even longer when I when I think about it. So that that was uh, an enormous comfort, knowing that this 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 will work. There's there is there is a, an obvious point to this, and the uh, drugs do what they say they'll do. The treatment does what they what, what they say it will. Have you had the treatment you expected, or has it changed because of COVID? Um, the only change is I I go for blood tests to my GP, so I'm, right. I'm now I'm now I'm now on monthly blood tests, um, having been having daily blood tests pretty much for for a long time. Uh, so I, I was still going to the hospital at the start of uh, of COVID and, and when the lockdown came. So the that 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 was that was that was fine because it felt very very safe. Uh, and, and how the um, staff were managing everything. I wasn't concerned, actually. Uh, okay. You're more anxious about how you get there rather than when, when you're there. So just tell us how you are now. Are you back at work at A&E? So I'm back working, which is, which is really lovely. Uh, sadly, not, we're not in my normal job, not, not in A&E. I, um, my bloods are um, normal other than the, what you would expect and, and I was told to expect with the, the effect of the medication is that my, my, my white cell markers are, all, are, are a wee bit low. Uh, but would, bit you, low. would you plan to go back to A&E in a year's time maybe? How do you see it going forward? I would definitely want to see myself go back, absolutely. And if there's precautions I can take, then I will, I will, I will, I will look to try and do that. I think I would, I would push to take, uh, I guess, a degree of positive risk on, on, on that to be able to go back to work and, and, and have, have a sense of normality. Uh, I, I know I'd, I definitely want to see myself as somebody living with CLL, not, not have CLL define me. Um, so I, I, I definitely want to maintain the normal things that I have in my life and, and, and have had, and, and work's a huge part of my life, and I, I definitely want to be able to push and see what I can get back to doing. Yeah. How did you find C- us? How did you find CLL support? So I have been, I've, I've been looking at the various support networks that are there, and uh, well, I think it was my wife that had, had seen uh, the, the under sixty CLL group. What I have, have have taken from it and what I like about it is it's we're we're all in the same situation. It's people who we, we might not meet in any other way and we probably wouldn't meet in any other way. But what's lovely is that people from such diverse kind of backgrounds and thoughts and opinions and beliefs and everything else, we have this one thing in common that links everybody and I love that it's a mix of uh, they're really quite grown-up conversations and really quite serious conversations, and everybody's incredibly supportive of each other. And then some irreverence and some normality and and, and, and some daft things. And uh, it just it's, it's it's what you want. It's, I guess it's how you want to experience life, isn't it? It kind of mirrors what we how, how we want to live with this with this condition as well. It's there's some grown-up moments, but you still have to live in the meantime as well, and and, and do normal daft things sometimes. Well, David, thank you so much for giving up your time today. We're all, in, from all the trustees, we're very, very grateful and it's lovely to, to, to talk to you again. And thank thanks you, very much you. and thank, thank you for a great story. And I'm so yeah. pleased to see you looking so fantastically fit, well and healthy. And uh, right, well done to your wife for finding the group, so she needs a big up there as well. So well yeah, done yes, to well, her. Passing on. She'll be pleased. Yeah, yeah. Right. give her our thank best. You. Thanks then, David. Lovely. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye.